Good Friday evening, everybody, from the home office backyard. I'm meteorologist Austin Onik on a beautiful Friday. Happy Veterans Day. A very big thank you to all the veterans out there for wearing the uniform. And into tonight and the weekend, things are looking very nice, very dry. Could be kind of frosty by the time we hit early Sunday morning. So if you have any plants outdoors, that clear sky is not going to work out for you too well as we look for some very chilly temperatures coming up. So tomatoes and anything else you've got out there that are still growing, like mine back over toward the fence, you're going to need to make certain that those are protected. We'll We'll talk more about that in our video weather blog called Weather Overtime, also available at wreg.com slash weather. For the rest of the evening tonight, should be good stargazing conditions. A few clouds, a few leftover jet contrails up there, but that's really about it. Dry conditions will continue into the course of the rest of the weekend. Maybe a chance of showers by Monday, but again, we'll talk about that coming up on Weather Overtime tonight. Looking pretty nice out across much of the Mid-South. As we see, again, fairly dry conditions out there. The moon rising in the southeast and just fairly close to full. It's a waxing gibbous moon, which means it's changing toward full. In a few days, it'll be a waning gibbous moon meaning it's mostly full, but it'll be going back toward the last quarter and it'll be visible in the constellation of Pisces coming up a little bit later on. The supermoon this weekend, the biggest full moon that we have seen in nearly 70 years time, that will be occurring into this weekend. It'll be mostly visible. The best time to view it will be Saturday night into Sunday morning. And again, Monday night, Sunday night into Monday morning, you might be able to see at least a little bit of it, depending on if we have any clouds out there, but it also is going to be biggest for the Mid-South area, viewing it as it spins around the world on Saturday night to Sunday morning or so. Plus, take a look at EarthSky.org for more information about the supermoon why it's so important to look at stuff like this and also again is it pretty much just hype to take a look at a lot of things in this nature to take a look at a great article from bruce mcclure on the earthsky.org website great opportunity to see more there tonight's flyover is not that much once again uh, the visibilities that you see there in the column marked brightness or magnitude on the left hand side that indicates how bright the satellite is going to be if it's a negative number it's very bright positive number less bright and the larger the number gets the less visible it becomes so you would have to see something in about a 3.0 or lower number to be able to see it with the naked eye and as of right now you can see some of these out there you're going to have to take it uh, your eyes outside away from city lights and down to the lower left hand corner you can see the lacrosse 5 rocket body that is a piece of space junk and that's going to be the most visible thing out there for later on this evening so that'll be your best bet to see at least one rocket body. They'll be going from the northwest sky almost across the sky and about a uh, six to seven minute transit. So this is going to be a fairly visible uh, sight out there. It's not going to be very bright but it should be recognizable it'll look like a bright point of light moving across the sky no beacon blinkers like an airplane and it will not be shooting across the sky like a shooting star it'll be going decently steadily slowly and again this will be seen in the northwest sky traveling back toward the southeastern sky at about 639 later this evening tomorrow morning a couple of things you can take a look at Tiangong 1 the Chinese first Chinese space station will be briefly visible for maybe a minute or two around the east northeastern horizon and that'll be at about a quarter till five in the morning one of the other ones that'll be a little bit more visible is another piece of space junk an atlas sun tower rocket body that'll show up at about 540 transit the sky at about 544 and fade in the southeastern skies at around 547 another one you can spot in the southern skies closer to sunrise at about six o'clock in the morning going very close to orion as it sets and down toward the southern skies before it fades in the southeast. That'll be the OTV-4 X-37B, the secret so-called space plane. That's something else you can see. And that'll be tomorrow morning at just about 6 o'clock, again from the west horizon back toward the southeast, going right through Orion, and it looks like very close to the star uh, Sirius in Canis Major. Later on tonight, again, should be good viewing of Venus, very close to the horizon after sunset, and Mars out there. Saturn is too close to the sun to be able to see before sunset anymore. It was nice while it lasted, but that's about as good as it gets. And, of course, noting a very clear area of the moon rising up a little bit uh, later on this evening, and 
into tomorrow morning. Uh, that's where we're going to be seeing the moon out there. Now, tomorrow morning, you'll be able to see, again, uh, the moon setting and also the uh, planet Jupiter rising in the eastern sky. So that's something you should be able to uh, see there. But the moon, again, will be visible coming up later on tonight in the southeastern skies as the sun begins to set. The Pleiades is going to be the best opportunity for you to see the northern torrid meteors. That's going to be coming up into around later on tonight. Late tonight into tomorrow morning, the northern torrid meteor shower expected to peak. They're not a sharp peak. They remain fairly steady, according to the article we have on Earth Sky from Bruce McClure. You're going to have to have a very dark sky. You might see about 5 to 10 meteors per hour. With the moon up, you're probably not going to see as many as you possibly could. But again, this is going to be one of the best times to see these because the torrids are very good for seeing fireballs, very bright, exploding meteors that you can catch very, very easily if you're watching at the right time. But they are fast, and some of them are very, very bright. So this is a good opportunity to get out and take a look at that. And more information on that, again, available at a very good website called earthsky.org. And more information available from them and from many other uh, places to go to for different websites. We'll post some of those on our Sky blog page later on this weekend websites that you may not have known about or thought to take a look at we'll have more on that throughout the rest of the weekend that'll be coming up at wreg.com slash weather i'll have your complete forecast throughout the rest of the weekend the mid weekend of november which is again looking good i'll have all that forecast throughout the rest of the weekend on news channel 3 from daybreak saturday all the way through news channel 3 at 10 late edition on sunday and we'll throw in some science information for you there on the astronomy blog which we call sky blog 3 which you have just taken a look at more information throughout the rest of the weekend on News Channel 3 on air and online. Thanks for joining me for Friday night's edition of What's Up in the Sky tonight that you can take a look at. Get your kids out and take a look at what's going on into the night sky. Take a trip outside of the city lights and get a good place you can take a look and see the galaxy. Very beautiful sight if you could get some clear skies for that. And also, again, a great opportunity to get out this weekend if the skies remain clear. And I'll bring you updates on that throughout the weekend as well. I'm meteorologist Austin Onik. This has been the latest edition of News Channel 3's Astronomy video blog called Skyblog 3. Thanks a lot for joining me. And remember, when it comes to science and anything involving astronomy, keep looking up.